Hello everybody, I am Tom and you are watching me play Disco Elysium. In today's episode, we're in the second day, uh, we talked to the Union leader. Kind of a hard ass, definitely a criminal. Um, but, let's uh, check this body, shall we? There he still is, looking right through you, with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Emitting it is all it does now. Let go of your nose without throwing up. As you breathe in, Thank the odor comes over you. <laughs> it's the smell of the mind telling you to run, and your stomach to wring itself empty. With your hands at your sides and your eyes squinting, you stand in it. It's a puzzle. What's hanging in front of you is a puzzle of decaying flesh, tattoos, and tendons. Do they always do that? They do after seven days, yes. We are deep in decomposition here. Step closer. The man before you is naked, but for a pair of underpants and enamel boots. His skin is greenish, marbled with decaying veins, and blotched by lividity. A fading web of tattoos covers his chest and shoulders. The cargo belt used to fasten him to the branch above appears industrial in strength. Inspect the boots. The material appears to be ceramic. Its clean white stands in stark contrast to the decaying flesh above the knee. The man wore thick polymer socks, probably for padding. A fine array of interlocking plates covers them. Interesting. Delicate and fragile. They feel alien to the world around you. Out of place somehow. Interesting. These are clearly not boots. They're armor. Possibly part of a larger set. These aren't just boots, are they? These are the armor we were stripped of. Indeed. Technically speaking, these are sabatons, not boots. What kind of armor is this exactly? Ceramic plate. Zirconium dioxide, most likely. This is where the make would be. Where? Under the hill. Fair weather. Fair weather model T500 VE. I'm guessing that's vitreous enamel. This is advanced stuff. Hmm. The material looks out of place here. It is. It's expensive. We've requested similar material for our tactical units for years now. The constabulary has deemed it too costly. In that time, we've lost six men to semi-automatics. How much are we talking about? For a full set, about four years of wages. Jesus. For the northwest region of Revachol, an officer's average yearly income is 5,500 real, unadjusted for rank. My yearly pay is 5,500 real. Not too much, yes. No wonder I can't pay my hostel bill. It's a sorry situation, I agree. Where's the rest of it scavenged by the locals? Piece by piece. He's been out here for seven days. It would be odd if they didn't. We should keep a lookout for these pieces. The armor mm. could yield information. This is one thing he might actually know. Understood. The sabatons dangle off the man's decaying form. Ageless and synthetic. How could this man afford such expensive hardware? That's for us to find out. Mr. Gart implied he was security personnel for the Harbour Company. This confirms my own assumptions. It's a pretty advanced for security, yeah. I agree. This equipment is way beyond what a guard can afford. Knock on the boot. A small bell-like sound fills the air, like tapping on the side of a porcelain cup. Sounds fragile. It's anything but. This material is a kinetic redistributor. It spreads kinetic energy horizontally, from plate to plate. Dissipating it entirely. See? Faint organic lines cover the plates where they separate into smaller ones. These plates then divide into smaller plates until there are hundreds of them altogether. Like whirls of floorboards. The design looks organic, influenced by highly resistant wood materials like lignum vitae and ebony, perhaps. What does this remind me of? If trees were made of porcelain, 
This is what their cross sections would look like. Interesting. Run your fingers over the lines. The smooth, glossy surface fractures so it's into like ever a more intricate interconnection. Tree flesh, for one of the better term. On the right Wood, sabaton, I guess, is the better term for this. The whorls are in the shape of a letter and number combination. E50, 100, 1000. Look like there's a serial number on the right sabaton. Good. Can you read it to me? X54156745678 Let's lie. Why drama? E50101000. We have a make and a number. That's something. We can use the radio in my kinema when we're done. Either station can chase it for us. Uh, pull the boot off. This feels dangerous. Are you sure? Grab the boot on your arm. The stench fills your nostrils. As you push downward, an ominous creaking sound comes from above. Stop! Pig's gonna pull his head off. <coughs> Brutal! Let go of the boot. What's wrong with you, asshole? Why is he letting Goku know? I don't know, baby. I don't know why he's such a Officer, if I may ask. What were you trying to achieve by putting on the deceased foot? Back off a little bit. The course. cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt, his torso covered in tattoos and extremities blotched pink and blue. I was expecting that to happen, by the way. I just wanted to try it anyway. Um, inspect the belt. The hangman's knot is pulled tight by the weight of the corpse below. Yellow, hard-edged polyester cuts into his neck. Above... A sliding buckle ties the belt to the branch. This is a steel-reinforced cargo lashing belt. Big brother of the regular cargo belt. It's used for tying cargo under six rotor airships. Hmm. Don't ask me how I know, but this is a lashing belt used for airlifting cargo. Airlifting? I thought it was used on lorries for strapping cargo to them. Hmm. Apparently this is a reinforced kind for air transport. My brain tells me so. The local harbor uses six rotors to shuffle containers around. I get the sense they use whatever was on hand without paying much attention to not incriminating themselves. By they, do you mean the Hardy Boys? Right now, everything seems to fit their confession. Hmm. They sure wanted him to stay up there. The rope is reinforced with steel wiring. I was afraid it would be. Thin steel wiring, parallel strands. This makes getting him down more problematic than I had assumed. How did they even get him up there? A noose is one of those things that's easier to use one way around. Hmm, he points to the buckle, trying... Uh, he points to the buckle, trying the belt to... Oh, tying the belt to the branch above, goddammit. Did they climb up like using the kid's ladder? That ladder can't carry a grown man. I didn't see any splintering either, did you? I think they lassoed the branch. Then pulled on the bell to close the buckle. Hmm. Could be. The shape of the branch supports the theory. Fair enough. Back off, my course. The cadaver hangs from the cargo belt. Limbs limp and torso covered in tattoos. Let's inspect those tattoos, shall An we? An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso. From the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time they intersect... A small white star is formed in their crossing. Interesting. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. His corpse is marked by stars. What will mine be marked by? Alcohol and mm. heartbreak. Is this a national pattern? Of no nation that I know of. If anything, it reminds me of religious illumination, last or penultimate century. Men who live harsh lives often turn to innocentic worship. But which one? I see no trace of a humanoid figure. We're missing something here. I agree. He wears a wide leather belt around his waist and a gun holster under his arm. He takes a thin piece of milled aluminium from his coat pocket and pulls it open. Sounds like a sword being unsheathed. A small lens appears. Some sort of camera. Not the lieutenant works. Shit, Kuno! What the fuck is that? An instant color camera. 
God damn. He produces two metal capped ampules and clicks them into place on the side of the apparatus and uh, a thin slot shines. There. I have only two ampules, so nobody move. I don't want to waste one. A sound, a shrill flash, followed by the breaking of a small ampoule of glass. You see streams of color pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper, rolling out. In case we need it. Um, the lieutenant says and shakes the paper, letting it dry in the cold wind. On it, a color-perfect copy of the dead man's tattooed chest. Huh, cool machine. Yes, it is pretty cool, isn't it? Uh, what do we need the photo for? It contains insight to the victim's person. By his build, I'd say this was a man of physical violence. The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. It is his letter. To us. Someone should decipher it. We'll need to show it around. Can I have it? I should look at it later without the corpse smell. Sure. Just don't lose it. The glossy-eyed corpse looks by. His mouth mute and his skin as colorful as the chemical rainbow on the photo paper, teeming with opportunistic organisms. Look him in the eye. His eyes are milky white and blind to the world, protruding comically from their sockets. There is no one home, just subaquatic terrors there. These eyes used to be blue, baby blue. Dark brown hair grows on his head, his face is ready to explode from the organic processes inside. The death's head grin has passed. What remains is an unrecognizable mess. His eyes, they used to be blue. Good. The victim is of occidental descent. Light brown hair, blue eyes. When he says occidental, he means white. Originally from the occidental subcontinent on Muindi. Hmm. Tell me, who are you, dead man? The corpse is dead silent. You have no idea why you just said that. Who is he? He is male, 40 to 50, with an athletic build. <laughs> the corpse looks right through you as you distance yourself from its stench. Eyes like a shark. It's going to take a step back. As you narrow your eyes, the monster before you blurs into a violent mess of green and pink. This is a trick. You've done it before. Pink is where the blood settled in the first hours post-mortem. You can use it to see if the corpse has been tampered Holy with. shit. Does his position at the time of death match the discoloration? Observe. Wait. God damn. Only the lower extremities are pink with a dash of blue. His fatted hands, thighs, and his neck, just above the noose. The rest of the corpse appears dark green in the cold spring air. His face and hands are pink, thighs too. I see it. His neck too. The lividity goes right up his chin. We have good, well-pronounced discoloration here. I like your eyes. The monster comes back into focus. An explosion of color coursing with dark marbled veins. His stomach appears pregnant with something. Black liquid streams down his thigh and onto his boot. So, what do you think? Hmm. He's beaten up, see the bruises? I do. Most of them are post-mortem. Maybe even all of them. The delinquents have made our jobs harder with their little sport. Stop talking in riddles, coin slot. I think he was upright after death, his hands, feet, and neck are discolored. Agreed. Especially on the neck. The belt acted like a tourniquet, keeping the blood in his head. The hypostasis supports her hanging. You would still like the hypostasis marks in the neck to be a bit more pronounced. Hmm. For some reason, my brain would like the pink to be more pronounced, especially in the neck. Maybe it looks faint to you? It could be more pronounced, actually. Du mon noté. Hmm. Maybe he was strangled by someone. Yes, there's always a chance we are wrong. We should check for ligament marks on his neck to see if they're in tune with the belt. We'll have to get him down first. 
Something's coming out of him. A pool of blood and feces has eaten into the frozen mud below the man's feet. Purge liquid is dripping into it, drop by drop. The victim appears to have contained no more than half a kilogram of digestion at the time of death. The fuck are you saying? Oh, talking about shit. Maybe we went to the toilet right before, <laughs> sometime before death. Maybe. Alright. Back off and catch your breath. But there is no breath to catch. Only the cadaver filling Thanks. the air and your nostrils. Thanks, Dave. He slowly rotates before you, decomposing. How do we get him down? Are you sure we finished the preliminary examination of the cadaver? We might miss some of these things once he's done. Hmm. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt, his torso covered in tattoos and extremities blotched pink and blue. Yep, the preliminary examination is done. Let's get him down from here. Hmm. The steel reinforced belt presents a unique challenge. I brought chain cutters, but I don't see a good angle of approach to the belt. He doesn't actually think the challenge is unique. He thinks it's frustrating, annoying, and harder than he <laughs> thought. The cadaver is a good 1.2 meters up. Neither one of us can reach the belt without assistance. And even if we do, there's the question of cutting the airship strength material. Hmm. Maybe we could ask for help from the harbor. I was really hoping we wouldn't. The Union appeared to be suspect in this case. It seems like a dangerous route to go down. True. I would really prefer if there was another way. These people might have an agenda. Let's consider but something what else first. other options? The corpse twists on the belt, like chicken on a skewer. Could we saw the branch? Climb up there and... So the branch? Mm, seems dangerous. There has to be a less risky way, with less falling down of trees. I'm mad, but let's have another look at him. Hmm. Nah, we need to get him down. Yes, we do. Shooting him down seems like a poor decision. Hmm. Oh. With the buckle ties the rope to the branch, that's a good spot to aim. Hmm. There, the buckle points. The buckle holds the belt together. Where? Ah, yes, I see. If the shot hits that, there might be a chance to release the belt. Yeah, now we're talking. Entertain the Kuno with some <laughs> shit. They'll miss. The pigs will miss Kuno. Silence. With his elbow sharp, the lieutenant unzips his jacket and produces a lightweight firearm. He drops a paper cartridge in the barrel, oh, separates right, okay. the scouring stick, and gives the cartridge five tucks. That's a Kiel A9090 armistice, mass-produced muzzle loader, ascetic, frugal, one of the most common firearms in the world. He then steps back and assumes the fellow Stess position. Taking aim, the corner of his eye twitches. His finger is on the trigger. He's gonna fucking miss! The kid's voice is drowned in a shrill blast that echoes off the walls of the surrounding tenements. A cloud of smoke slowly parts in the air as the lieutenant steps back and says to himself, God damn it. Fucking idiot! Muka bar asshole! Kuno could have hit it easy. But then Kuno's not fucking handicapped, is he? Try again, maybe? No, we are lucky as it is. We didn't break anything, and the victim remains uncompromised. Any more mistakes could put us in an unfortunate position with the locals. We have eyes on us. I didn't do us any favors with that. Okay. Kuno's sorry too. Kuno feels sorry for the Beano clad. The lieutenant doesn't say a word just looks at the gun in his hand. What now? I have to say, it's beginning to look unlikely we can get him down. I was thinking the same assistance. thing. Let's go, Husk. Okay. 
They do have the tools and the men. And since it looks like they put him there... Then get him down to. <sighs> okay. Let's do it in the lousy, dangerous way. Hmm. How do we get inside the hub? From the gates. By negotiating or fighting. I'm unenthusiastic about fighting. Or we can try to find some secret third path. It's an ugly door. To the gates. Let's negotiate. Cool. I can also probably check... They're probably still in the diner, right? I can probably go into the diner and just ask them whether or not they can help me in. Also, I leveled up. More into perception, please. <laughs> All the perception. Alright, so my perception is effectively maxed. Next, I want to do visual calculus. Because... All the times that I've used official calculus, it's been kind of incredible. It's incorrect. An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso of the pattern still kind of has an ethnic feel to it, but nothing familiar. What's the meaning of this tattoo? For you to discover, you've gotten as far as you will without assistance. Someone who knows about history could tell you. Interesting. we go take it to, what's her name? <laughs> But I don't think she'll tell us until we, uh... I don't think she's gonna tell us until we actually, uh, find out about this drug trade for her. Looks like the circus left town, but the clowns are still here. He doesn't look particularly happy to see you. Um... I want to talk to you about the hanging again. again. Just get the dead guy's autograph, since you're his biggest fan. <laughs> Good one, Titus. About fucking. Alright, I was gonna see if I could just ask these guys to help me. <laughs> since they put him up there in the first place. Um, I think this is probably gonna be a shorter episode. We're seeing like 20 minutes. I think anything that I do here is gonna take longer than 10 minutes. So it's probably gonna push us over that half an hour. So I think I'm just gonna leave it here. Because we're like... Pretty far. Like, we're not horrible. Alright, let's have a look. Um, armor. Ask Kuno about what he knows about the armor. Use Kim's shortwave to run the serial number. Ask for tattoos. Alright, so. Let's do the, uh. Inside, this I might be able to do. see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull out uh, toolbox, uh, and. Pick up the radio. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Um, can you run a serial number for a pair of armored boots for me? Sir Officer, what's the number? And the make of the armor, if you know it. E50-100-1000, the make of the model... Uh, the make and model of the armor is the Fairweather T500-VE. Got it. I'll contact the ICP database immediately. Call back tomorrow. Hopefully they'll have dug up something useful by then. Sorry. The International Collaboration Police, ICP, is an inter isolary law enforcement service. The crown jewel in the moral intern, Diadem alongside EPIS and the coalition government. Alright, I'm done. 57, over and out. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers, a radio on a hook, a pull-out. Fine. That was quick. Alrighty then. So tomorrow we can learn about, uh... Learn about the serial number. Um, this is on Wednesday, so I don't have to worry about that, per se. Cool. I think we're done. Thanks for watching, guys. If you liked the video, please leave a like. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. And as always, thank you for watching, and I shall see you next time. Where well, we're going to try and get into the harbour, I suppose, and see if we can get one of these guys to help us get the body down. Which, you know, isn't the best option, but... I mean, it's probably the best option. It's not a good option, if that makes any sense. Anyway. See you next time, guys.